Sri Lanka's most powerful news brand. President accuses corrupt politicians of postponing bond commission report debate until after elections. Challenges debate to be brought forward. Brawl at the Uwa Provincial Council. Four members in hospital. Tear gas and water cannons fired at anti sitem protest in Kolpiti. Sri Lanka walloped Bangladesh by 10 wickets enter Tri-Series final. Hello there, very good evening and welcome to your Prime Time News Bulletin, I'm Shen Silva. A good evening, I'm Mahina Bongso. Uh, we, ta we, sta we start off with a look at your local news. Moving on, President Maithripala Sirisena has expressed his displeasure over the decision taken at the party leaders' meeting to debate the reports of the Presidential Commission on bond and serious fraud and corruption after the elections. A public rally was held in Panadura today under the auspices of President Maitri Palasir Sena. The very next day after the Commission's report was submitted to me, the leaders in the opposition started shouting, immediately present it to the public, immediately provide the Commission's report to Parliament, give the Commission's report to each and every individual. That's what they said. This was the day after I had received it. Even I hadn't had the time to turn the pages yet, so I summoned the lawyers of the Attorney General's department. We pursued the report, key findings were highlighted to me and I made a statement to the country three days later following legal advice. They couldn't even wait for that. They were shouting, give it, give it, give it to the country, they said. Immediately submit it to parliament. There are several factors in this commission report which are key to filing cases and must be kept secret. Some people say that these are the pages missing. There are no missing pages. There are documents and files which can fill up two lorries that are sealed. What they say is missing is also among these sealed documents. It can be shown. But do you know what happened the day before yesterday? I submitted this to Parliament. I sent not only one commission report but the reports of both commissions. I sent the report on the bond scam and the presidential commission on serious fraud and corruption. What happened to the people who were saying that these reports must be debated? and that information must be given to the public. This is what you call the Alliance of the Corrupt Elite. The Alliance of the Corrupt Elite was established and both of them got together and said, we do not need to debate this now. Let us take it up after the election. Why? Because if this was taken up before the election, both sides would have seen their clothes falling off. You can see what is in the reports of both these commissions, like seeing through a glass of water. The day before Parliament convened, the Alliance of the Corrupt Elite met at a house in Borella. They have no political party. They have no religion. They don't mind differences in language. All thieves are the same. They are in the same wave of thieves. So this wave of thieves formed an alliance and discussed that it would not be good for them to discuss this in Parliament. They would all be finished at the election on the 10th if this was discussed. They told themselves, let us close this now and take it up after the election. And so they did. Where are these two reports? They shouted at the top of their voices to give the reports. We must debate it. We must make it public, they said. I challenge these great heroes to debate these reports in Parliament at least a day before the 10th of February. And it will be made clear to the people of the country who these people are. On to another story that made the headlines tonight. Now, several members of the Uwa Provincial Council were hospitalized today following a brawl at the council premises. The brawl broke out when supporters of the new provincial education minister, Sendil Thondaman, attacked a group of UNP councillors. Supporters of Sendil Thondaman of the Ceylon Workers' Congress gathered in front of the Uwa Provincial Council today to felicitate him on his appointment as the provincial education minister. Meanwhile, Uwa opposition leader R.M. Ratnayaka and UNP councillors A. Ganesha Murthy and Upali Sena Ratna arrived at the council for today's sitting. Tensions flared at this time.
Several minutes after the group, including Ganesha Murthy, left the scene, Sendil Thondaman arrived there. Chief Minister Chamara Sampath, who previously held the education portfolio, was also present. Following the felicitation, the group, including Thondaman, entered the council. Subsequently, the group, including Ganesha Murthy, returned to the council in a vehicle belonging to Minister Harin Fernando. Sendil Thondaman's supporters had attacked them once again. While Ganesha Murthy participated in the council sitting following the assault, the sitting was suspended after UNP councillors voiced protest over the incident. Subsequently, two councillors who were attacked were admitted to hospital. Over provincial councillor Ganesha Murthy joined the UNP from the Ceylon Workers' Congress and also faced several allegations during his time at the helm of Tamil Affairs at the Provincial Education Ministry. As such, Ganesha Murthy was unable to attend council sittings on two prior occasions. Sources say his seat on the council could have been annulled if he had not attended today's sitting. anti saiton protesters were back on the march again today defying court injunctions. And once again, the police fired high-pressure water cannons and tear gas to disperse the crowd. The protest march against the alleged attempt to legalize Saitam by changing its name started from the Vijayarama Junction in Nugegoda. <laughs> Yesterday, both the Gangoda Villa and Colombo Magistrates Courts issued injunction orders preventing this march from taking place. Police announced the court order issued by the Nugegoda Court when the students reached Delkanda disregarding the previous court order. <laughs> The march continued on towards Kirlapana, Tummulla and then to the Kolpiti Junction. Police then announced the court order issued by the Colombo Magistrates Court. However, the students continued disregarding the order. As the students attempted to move ahead disregarding two court orders, police used high-pressure water cannons and tear gas. Presidential Commission of Inquiry into Serious Acts of Fraud and Corruption. The report is now out and recommendations have been, have been made. Now, one of the institutions that was subject to investigation was Avant Garde. Now, in its recommendations, the Presidential Commission says that legal action can be taken against 13 people uh, under the Criminal Procedure and also under the Bribery Act. Now, one important point in this report is the Presidential Commission has found 17 weapons not properly uh, or legally registered in the country have been used to train sea marshals for avant-garde. And the training was done at the Special Task Force base uh, located in Khatakurunda. And that is where the fitness certificates have also been issued for these sea marshals. Now, the Presidential Commission of Inquiry says criminal cases can be filed against this institution known as Avant Garde and its chairman, Ms. Sankar Senadipati. Today, right here with me is human rights activist, attorney at law, Naval Rajapaksa. Good evening. So, one of the key points in this report is that action can be taken against the firearms ordinance. Now, under this uh, ordinance, these individuals, these 13 people mentioned in the report, can't they be arrested? Yes, well, why not? Well, it's in Sri Lanka law, we can arrest all people who uh, possess, possess uh, illegal uh, weapons, especially illegal weapons. We can arrest and we can produce the, uh, produce the BB reports and produce the magistrate court and uh, institute illegal actions against them. Right. Now, uh, if you have at least one illegal weapon properly not registered, you will be arrested by the police and you will be produced in court and thereafter only the B report will be produced. Now on this point, on avant-garde, uh, can't the Attorney General act on this immediately? 
Yes, uh, we, uh, General can uh, action uh, President Commission uh, recommend to uh, Attorney General to um, through, through, go through the, the, this uh, Commission report and uh, take legal actions. That he can give their opinion. He he has understood the Criminal Procedure Code. He has power to uh, give opinion to uh, Police Department to uh, arrest them and uh, file in B reports and uh, take an, 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 uh, necessary legal actions. Now. The change of government was made on the 8th of January 2015 and civil activists played an important role in this change. Now, after this change, the avant-garde incident was exposed. Now, you exposed there were mercenaries and there were weapons without proper permits. And then even then Justice Minister Vijay Das Rajapaksa also made a very important statement to Parliament, especially on the avant-garde matter. Let's have a listen to that uh, soundbite from the minister. Mam bohme pahedi lo cabinet mande le di ki hua. Main ganu denu sambandha va upurna da huye panata. Giniya vi atnya panata. I said very clearly in cabinet that there is no premise in criminal law to file a case on this transaction considering the Explosives Act, the Firearms Ordinance or the Prevention of Terrorism Act. That is my personal opinion and as a lawyer I have a right to express that opinion. I express this opinion to the President, the Prime Minister and the Cabinet. When an opinion was sought from the Attorney General's Department, the Solicitor General Suhada Gamlat expressed his opinion and the additional Solicitor General Vasantha Navaratna Bandara who is below him expressed his opinion. There was a disparity in these two opinions. What did we do then? The Prime Minister said very clearly, you resolve this as it is a problem between two officials and that we would seek the opinion of the Attorney General. Since no matter who in the department expresses an opinion, it becomes his opinion as everyone there is subject to him. However, eventually, he said the same thing. He said that a case cannot be filed under the Firearms Ordinance, the Explosives Act or the Prevention of Terrorism Act. However, the Attorney General said this could be examined further for corruption. He said if there is such evidence, a case can be filed and that this would fall to the Bribery and Corruption Commission and not the Attorney General's department. Later it was said that dollars had come in from overseas, amounting to about 16,000 million. This was all money that came from overseas to our country. 3,500 million of this was paid to the government. Later, the Attorney General ordered the Inspector General of Police to investigate whether an offence had been committed under the Money Laundering Act. The report of the Presidential Commission of Inquiry, or when it speaks on the matter of avant-garde, especially highlights the illegal manner of these weapons that were used by this uh, institution. Now, there are also attempts to bring this under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act as well. For instance, if I may continue on that point, now, Vasantha Navaratna is a junior in one capacity. Now, senior to him is Suhada Gamlat. But there were statements that Vasantha Navaratna's recommendations must be disregarded. What happened exactly over there? Yes, uh, th those days that uh, Attorney General Department is under the P.S. Rajapaksha. Now, he firstly, that um, Avantgarde, he al always try to protect the Avantgarde company because of uh, he has some, uh, uh, I think, um, some connections with Avantgarde's uh, chairman, Nishagasin Adipati, and he always try to uh, protect Avantgarde's people. That's why I think uh, that uh, Chodha Gamlat uh, give that, that, that kind of opinion because of uh, he is under the uh, supervision of Vijay um, uh, Paksha. That's why that UMP parliamentarians uh, against the, them and he was he, he must resign and he go to the uh, uh, with, with his uh, cabinet portfolio I think uh, um, given to the president after that incident indeed now in addition to avant guard another institution in question is Ratna Arakshaka Lanka now over the years strong statements have been made that employees at Ratna Arakshaka Lanka were used for political campaign purposes of the former president Mahinda Rajapaksa during his administration. Now, when we come to the point again of avant-garde and Ratna Arakshaka Lanka, the floating armory on the ship uh, Mahanura, the mercenaries, foreign mercenaries stationed at various positions, and a large number of illegal weapons were discovered. Now, on the 8th of January 2015, right after the presidential elections, Rumour has it that something very interesting happened at Temple Trees. As a civil activist, what exactly happened? Yes, I think uh, they 
try to uh, keep the government not uh, no, not uh, take to a new a new becoming president to um, become a ruler they try to uh, take uh, they are uh, keep their ruling with the uh, support of uh, army and uh, i think uh, they use uh, rakna lanka people and avangard peoples to uh, they use political campaign in mahindra rajapaksha also lot of uh, rakna lanka people is army peoples they service for part time to army and uh, part time to rakna lanka this is the i think uh, misappropriation of public funds very uh, very large huge huge uh, quantity i think uh, they use uh, rakna lanka and avangard and also army and navy they for three forces to uh, to conspiracy and to uh, not to not to uh, uh, not to give a uh, new uh, president to uh, they are become to a president and they try to uh, conspiracy in the military side thing this is the i think uh, a very very serious crime uh, against our law a strong word you used conspiracy so yes. conspiracy against the state now that is a serious incident yes now let's imagine on the 8th of january 2015 the new government came into power what if none of these weapons were seized the mahanwara vessel was not forced to anchor and then these mercenaries were not taken into uh, the law what if none of this happened what would the situation be now they always uh, say that, that mahindra rajapaksha and their supporters always say patriotism and they try to uh, use uh, some uh, army peoples and some avangard or deserted peoples to i think they some uh, illegal weapons uh, in our society they can uh, use to uh, tackle and uh, to to god i think this government to people this government i think now there are many attempts being made to link this up with money laundering only yes now uh then minister uh, sagala watnayaka in 2016 in a statement to parliament which is also included in the hanzar said that the weapons at ratna arakshak lanka in fact belong to the sri lanka army sri lanka police and the sri lanka air force now since this incident was exposed many elite individuals in the political political sphere have come forward making statements protecting avant god and their activities now what is exactly going to happen if these statements are continuously made if people are trying to protect this institution uh, of which the uh, presidential commission itself has said that action must be taken that's why like the that that alocius uh, mr nishank senadipati lot spend lot of money to the lam politicians and other peoples why, why they why they try to protect the avant garden and, and after that the some 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 political leaders want to uh, divide some political parties to use strategies uh, use the use by, but but that that strategy has you now fail the report is now out the recommendations are made public we all know what the recommendations are who is involved and who is not involved what institution is involved what action must be taken right now by all law enforcement authorities yes i think they recommend to uh, file criminal charges i think my uh, attorney general must give the opinion to file criminal charges against that that uh, yes, that suspects so that that people i think thank you very much mr rajapaksa for joining us today here yes. at news first so since the 8th of january 2015 the people of this country have been calling to put an end to corruption fraud and all other malpractices that marred this country for many decades one thing the people ask is the perpetrators of this incident must be taken before the law and they should be punished and the people say justice should be served In the meantime Indonesian president Joko Widodo who is in Sri Lanka on a state visit met with prime minister Ranil Wickremesinghe today The meeting took place at Temple Trees this morning. The Indonesian president had pledged his fullest support to the development of the railway sector in Sri Lanka. Ideas were also exchanged at the meeting on the support which Indonesia could extend to infrastructure development in Sri Lanka. According to a statement issued by the Prime Minister's office, areas of focus included water supply and drainage and highways. The two leaders had also discussed cooperation in the field of education and tourism development. Meanwhile a delegation from Japan including officials of the Tokyo Chamber of Commerce and Industry also called on Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe today. Addressing a media briefing held in Colombo today, former governor of the Central Bank Ajit Nibad Cabral commented on the process of issuing treasury bonds. 
actually there was nothing called private placement. That was a word that was coined by the Prime Minister to give a different meaning. The word that is used is direct placements. The system that was used was auction, whom direct placements. That is a hybrid system. So it was very transparent, it was very clear, it was a practice that was used for 18 years. So that was overnight change without notice and it was said by the Prime Minister that he insisted that it was changed. Arjuna Mahendra. Scandals took place under the old system. No, no. Of an auction. No scan that that no, is by by August change. By ch 2015 and the March 29, 2016. As auction only. Under the auction only system. That was the so system that was, that was changed. That was the system that was changed and that led to this kind of a uh, situation. That is exactly what Governor Jayavadana way back in 1996 when he introduced it said we will not permit the uh, auction only because it will lead to this kind of a situation. That was envisaged. Views were also expressed in this regard during the SLFP media briefing held today. <laughs> Our friend Ajit Nivad Kabral, a former central bank governor, says he is ready to testify 24 hours a day. The same people who volunteer and seem eager to do this are the people involved in it. You know what he has done? We were all in the same government. There was a massive fraud in the Greek bond case. How about the funds spent through a separate account to bring some games to Hambantota? Everything is being revealed. Not only that, there are certain incidents that happened in the central bank back then. He knows that the investigations are being launched. He wants to say that there are allegations because of his current political affiliation. Usually, thieves gang together. So he is in the right group. Former chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Nal Kagodeheva, addressing a media briefing today, claimed that no irregularities took place in the SEC under his tenure. As far as SEC is concerned, for the last three years, wasn't there a single noise about it? Now, the same chairman who was there in 2012, what, 2011 period, has been the chairman of SEC from January 2015. He was brought back to look into those things. Has he been able to, has he been able to find out any irregularity that took place in SEC during this period? Right? So that proves very clearly this is all a lie. It is very similar to this central bank issue. When you are at fault, when you have issues to hide, you are just accusing somebody else to draw the attention. I will tell you what is the problem with SEC. The problem with SEC is very clearly they have basically destroyed the capital market that we had. The, the Prime Minister had two financial institutions under him, the central bank and SEC. Both have issues. That's the truth. As far as central bank is concerned, this bond issue, as far as ACC is concerned, absolutely poor performance. So that's the reality. Nalaka Godeheva, the former chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission, was arrested on the 7th of December 2015 along with two other suspects in connection with their alleged involvement in conspiring to misappropriate 5 million rupees of funds belonging to the SEC. The charges leveled against the trio occurred at the SEC in 2013. They were later released on bail by the Colombo High Court on the 21st of January 2016. The case will be taken up for consideration once again on the 14th of February this year. Minister of Plantation Industries Navin Disanayaka says that his ministry will establish an agency to monitor the 20 plantation companies on their tea production operations and financial affairs. The minister was speaking at a press briefing organized to speak about the progress of the tea exports in 2017. Attention was also drawn towards the corruption in the sector. A lot of people said that the tea industry is going to decline and uh, it's going to stagnate. But the figures before you prove otherwise. Uh, the figures we have given are the correct figures. They are not manipulated in any way. You can make the own, your own interpretations about the tea industry by looking at the figures. The Colombo tea, tea auction gets the best price out of all the auctions in the world. Quality, quality, quality. This is what I want. Uh, so there are a lot of nefarious activities happening, especially this uh, impurity is coming to the market. So this is what I meant by corruption. I want to clean that as much as I can. I don't think I have taken uh, hard decisions on that. Maybe it is my fault also. But <laughs> this year, this year I want to do what I can. The minister spoke about the liberalisation of the tea industry. There are certain uh, suggestions made 
So, uh, as you know, there is a very strong lobby uh, led by uh, one of the pioneers of the tea industry in Sri Lanka. We, so, uh, I am fully conversant with the arguments for and against it. Uh, I do not want to make drastic decisions that will affect the industry. Uh, but saying that, I also think that uh, we have to make decisions for the long-term benefit of the industry. What I ask the proponents for the blending is, can you guarantee me that the prices won't fall if blending happens? Speaking on News First Newsline program, the chairman of the Tea Exporters Association, Rohan Fernando, had this to say. But if you really analyze the figures, uh, whether it's true or false, is has to be determined after analyzing the figures vis-a-vis the world tea export market. Hmm. The world tea export market is growing leaps and bounds year on year. Have we penetrated into that or we are only looking at the Ceylon tea? What are we looking at in five years down the line, ten years down the line? What do, where do we want to be? Do we want to be a very little uh, export of pure Ceylon tea only and sustain uh, ever-growing uh, industry hmm. or we look at the, uh, the global market from a uh, different point of view with a wider angle. Proponents who want the tea industry to be liberalized say they have provided the government with the pros and cons of doing so. They charge that it is up to the government to take a decision without vacillating. Issuing a media release, Minister of Finance and Mass Media, Mangal Samarawira notes that Sri Lanka stands again at the cusp of a crucial election in three weeks' time that will determine the course of our nation in the years ahead. Minister Mangala Samaravira noted that the local government elections on the 10th of February is much more than a regional contest to capture political power in urban and municipal precincts. It is an old regime's first real attempt to recapture power and restore an odd, corrupt and dictatorial rule. Samaravira notes that delusioned by the road ahead which seems fraught with difficulty and the potential for lost opportunity, this constituency may waver. But he believes it is important to try to build on what has already been achieved and keep the window open for peace and change. The minister adds that it must never be forgotten that there is a profound correlation between the end of the tyranny imposed upon the citizenry and the fall of the Rajapaksa's regime in 2015. He states that it is this culture of extravagance, abuse of state property and state terror that is trying to make a comeback in the February 10th local government elections. Mangala Samaravira warns that electoral inroads made in this poll could be used to attempt to recapture national control in future elections. He concludes by stating, quote, With the Rajapaksa regime and its fellow barbarians at the gate once more, Sri Lanka is at another crossroads at this election. In a way, this makes the choice clearer for all those citizens who want liberty, democracy and peace. On the 10th of February, the people will have to choose once more. Will we continue the march to freedom or herald a return to fear? Unquote. Well, that's it from all of us here at the News First English News Desk. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Mahina Bongzo. And I'm Shane Silva. Take care and good night.